All right, welcome everyone to a new YouTube video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to find, hire, train, and manage appointment setters, okay? So first, I'm gonna be covering how to find them and how I found my own appointment setters, how I hire my own appointment setters and how you can do this too, how I train my appointment setters and how you can do this too, and lastly, how I manage them, and of course, again, how you can do this too. So with that being said, let's get started at like, you know, how I found my own setters and then if I were to document this into like a practical framework for you on what I do myself and how you can do this too. So I found my own setters, like by now I've had, you know, uh, eight to 10 appointment setters over like the last two years. I'd say the average churn rate of an appointment setter is like anywhere between, um, you know, for myself, it's 10 months, 10 to 12 months, which is quite a long time. I've seen a lot of people actually, you know, uh, average between the six to seven month churn rate. And there's a lot of different reasons why setters leave or why they promote. But let me get back to the point around like, you know, how I found them and how you can find too. So I mainly found my appointment setters through uh, my own communities, right? Like my own brands. And it's actually surprising to me how many people love the brand that I have, my story and the product and the client results we get. And therefore, we get some really amazing A players apply for the position. And hence why like it just amplifies the results we're already getting, but then like even better with an A player coming on board. So I used my own paid program community, right? Um, and then I also used my free Facebook community. And then basically my stories, on my brand, right? So that's how you can do it if you have a brand. Now, if you don't have a brand, no worries, there's other ways you can do it. So number one way you can do it is first of all, like formulate a job posting. And by the way, guys, if you wanna see what job posting I use, I give this away for free, my free Facebook group, just join with the link in the description down below. Uh, it's a scaling with Setter's Guide. It's 100% free, no opt-in. You can just check it out and get overflowing with value. But so again, uh, out of the four things we're talking about, we're still talking about like how to find them. So. Get, uh, go to my group uh, or formulate your own job posting, put out the job posting on Facebook communities and ideally in the biz op space or the B2B coaching space because I found that these people are very ambitious, are very sophisticated and with that you'll really get the best candidates. And also, by the way, in that guide that I share in my group, I even cover more in depth with real examples and documents because right now like I'm just explaining it which I'm gonna like do to the best of my ability. But you know, in that group, you're gonna be able to like see the best of the best when it comes down on how to do this. So that's how I found my setters and how you can find them too. So in short, job hosting that is attractive and clear. And number two, distributing these job hostings in the right place. I don't recommend Upwork. I don't recommend Fiverr because coaching is a very specific like industry, right? Like if you're doing B2C or B2B coaching, like you wanna work with people that are entrepreneurial ambitious and don't get paid by the hour okay but rather like by performance so that's how i found them that's how you can find them too so now when it comes down to hiring right so like okay great you've now actually got five to ten candidates one or two are great now how do you get them on board how do you trial them how does all that work what do you pay them right so let's talk about that so we just covered how to find them now let's talk about how to hire them so the way to do it is the following so number one, you want to, of course, determine on the call where you officially say like, hey, welcome on board, explain clear next steps. So the next steps the center takes once they come on board is you have an uh, internal company onboarding process, right? It's number one, because the last thing you want is the center to like come in and efficiently and like be actually worked in a month later because of all these like disorganizations within the company. So have a clear onboarding process for a team member. Uh, get a clear on compensation structure and then also uh, get a clear daily workflow for them, right? Which is like reply to the inbox first to all the unresponded people, go to this group and do outbound, follow up with the CRM, do this, do that, etc. right? And then also a CRM so they can track the leads. So, you know, we use Chatzillo so you can see, okay, this person's a client. Okay, this person's a hot prospect. Okay, this person is my family member, right? And that way you can keep track. So those are the four things. And lastly, trial, okay? Um, before we onboard them, there's one thing you can do. I also covered it in the guide, a reference to. You can just check the description, go to the group, check out the guide, it's free. Um, and in that guide, I basically cover how you can, uh, even before you put them in a trial, still test the setter by doing a role play over a Google document. So you can also see how they type right so that's that and then uh you pretty much get them on board you trial them for about a week or two 
And now, okay, Bass, how does the trial work? When do I know they're good? When do I know I should let them go? So here's what I would do. Number one, set clear cut KPIs for your setter. Here's what we do, and then I recommend what you should do. Because it's not because I do it, you should do it too. Like, I'll explain right now. So pretty much what we do is we have about 20 to 30 new conversations per setter, right? Uh, per day, 200 follow-ups per day. And in these two, there's active conversations going on about like 20% active back and forth throughout the day. Okay, there's like a one-off message or just accepting them into the group. And then you've got links sent. So how many links, your Canonly link, so they can book a meeting, has your setter sent out to the prospect, right? And then how many qualified meetings did they book? So then the question is, how do you measure a qualified meeting, right? So you measure a qualified meeting, it depends first of all on the industry, but the main way, like in the biz up space and the coaching space is like by budget. So we ask a very specific question to people before they book a call with us, which is, um, we only offer high ticket coaching programs that are life changing, given this is the right fit and can be life changing for you. What budget can you allocate, so capital towards a coaching program, knowing it can change your life. And so then we like actually have qualified meetings, right? So new conversations, follow-ups, link sent, qualified meetings, and that's it, okay? Um, and then pretty much you then have the KPIs determined for the trial. Um, and now you don't wanna like go crazy like I have. So these are our KPIs, but the KPIs you would set, number one, it depends on your lead flow. Number two, it depends on your revenue. Number three, it depends on your baseline that you have already within your organization. So if you don't track, cap if you don't, keep track of your KPIs, then you need to like come up with a theoretical baseline that is realistic for the setter, but also, uh, you know, achievable, right? So that could be, you know, 10, 20 new conversations, 100 follow-ups, five links sent, two, three qualified meetings booked, right? So that's like how you can determine the KPIs of a trial, but you need ideally number one, a baseline with real data points you can use so ideally, if you've tracked your own KPIs, put them as a baseline for the setter, but also cut them some slack because know that they've yet to build a lot of reference points that are new, they need to get worked in, right? So cut them a little bit of slack, but at the same time, know that A players adapt fast. And then two, if you don't have one, come up with one, but be realistic. Uh, look, if you're a 10K, 20K per month business owner and you expect your setter to book three to four meetings while you're not able to, then maybe you shouldn't hire a setter, right? Or if you are a 10 to 20K per month business owner, and uh, you know you set a realistic goal for the setter, then that's good, and that's the way I would do it. But I see a lot of people like be at 10, 20K per month, and then have these huge goals that they set for a setter and expect a team member to run their business, and that's not how that will work. Because what will happen is this, you're gonna burn to five to 10 setters, they're all gonna leave you because it's an unrealistic expectation, right? And I see a lot of people have this expectation, that's why I'm so straightforward about it, it's just to like save you a lot of time and just be very honest with you, right? So if you're a 10, 20K per month, use your baseline or create a realistic one. And also if you're a 10, 20K a month, and you want an A player setter, then you need to pay them a base because people will leave you because again, they're attracted to the best opportunities. And when you have an A player, you should treat them right and not bad, okay? And that's like why my churn rate is like 10 to 12 months instead of like the average five to seven months, I would say. Okay, and usually they don't even leave. They pretty much just promote within my company to like a setter manager, right? Like right now I've got a setter who's been with me for eight months and uh, he's gonna be our coach in my mastermind. And he's also going to be a um, setter manager, right? So instead of like him leaving, he's promoting. He's a very ambitious guy, right? So I'm doing with what I can. With, uh, I, I'm doing what I can with what I have, right? It's two options, he leaves or he promotes. I want him up. So. That's that, so we just covered how to find, hire, and now let's talk a little bit about training, right? So how do you train setters? There are so many different ways you can do it, right? So the way I recommend you train a setter is first just trial them, set the KPIs, throw them into the trenches, hold them accountable, give feedback within that trial on Slack and make sure you're constructive and not reactive. And then what you can actually do is um, after that trial, if they pass, you can do daily huddles of 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes a day, where you give them feedback on, you know, the things they need to improve upon. But other than the feedback comes a layer, right? You need to also provide your setters with uh, SOPs, scripts, uh, links, right? All the right resources so they can perform optimally, okay? So that's how you can actually train your setter and don't get them like to 
you know, a lot of course training or hours of calls because then they're actually not doing the thing they should be doing. And then you're like wondering why they're not getting results for your business. But that's because you're having them like go through hours and hours of course training and hours and hours of calls per day where they're like doing more learning than actually, you know, doing the thing. And trust me, a setter is going to learn the most from practice and not from theory. Theory, there's time and place for that. But as I'm sure you, most of you know, entrepreneurship and like becoming good at something is very practical, right? Like you don't become a good basketball player by reading a lot of books about basketball. You become it by like, have a little bit of foundation, listening to your coach, but then just doing the thing and crushing it, right? Exact same with setter, exact same with being an entrepreneur, right? Uh, so I could go on about that, but back to the point. So that's training. So we just covered how to find, hire, train. Now let's talk about management, okay? So this takes me a little bit back to not setting, but infrastructure, right? Because you need a good overview of your daily operations, okay? So we use Slack. And on Slack, we have sales calls channel. We have a sales setter team channel. And uh, those are the main channels we use because in the sales calls channel, I can see the meetings come in and see how many qualified meetings come in. And I can see how many meetings they book for the whole day. And then in the sales setter team channel, I can see their end of the day report, right? So how many new conversations did they have? How many follow-ups did they do? How many links did they send? How many qualified meetings did they book? Right. And then with that also, how many hours did they work? Okay. And then that's like how you can really, um, put management activities in place based on what needs improvement, but basic management activities are the following. It's holding setters accountable. It's giving setters feedback. It is doing daily cuddle if necessary, because sometimes it will not be necessary. <laughs> Sorry about the background uh, noise guys. I just got sprinklers going off here, but. Yeah, so like, you know, that that's really um, the way you wanna go about setters, okay? And it's important that um, you manage them the right way. Like management isn't doing five to 10 things. It's like working smart, doubling down on the right activities and working hard is like working in the business. But when you're working on the business as a manager, your goal is not to like work hard. I mean, that's a given at certain times. But the majority is that you work smart and you lead your team with the right activities and you don't overwhelm them, right? So for example, if I think back of like when I worked in George, I said, George, look, here's the workflow, here's the CRM, go kill it. And then the next day I said, okay, hey man, here's some feedback. Um, and then also like adjust your daily workflow, go and focus on our low ticket offer, reach out to people there. And then from there, like have a conversation and book a call with them because these are like the most warm leads that we have because they've gone through a product and that's working smarter than managing, right? So basic management activities is again, holding them accountable, making sure like they're working. It's very, very important. And then also it is making sure that you're doing a daily huddle if necessary. And then number three, you're just like, fill the gap or adjust the thing that they may not be seeing because you're very much in the business, right? So that's really in short, guys, how to find, hire, train, and manage appointment setters. I hope this was valuable to you. Um, quick, little, uh, quick little promo for myself. If you are an advanced coach, we offer done for you uh, setters and also done for you recruiting and internal company training in our mastermind. We also release a new offer called Elite. So we got Elite. Or mastermind but if you want some free stuff and like you know enjoy that we've got that too you can just go to the link in my bio join my group i got the scaling with setters guide right there and actually later this month i'm going to be releasing a new low ticket offer called scaling with setters it's the cost of a fancy dinner gonna swamp you with value and instead of like me talking you're gonna see real examples and all the good stuff so with that being said thank you so much for watching and uh, i'll see you all in the next video